Hey everyone, welcome back. You know what frame I've never really used much myself? Baruch. I never really had a reason to use him, and as some of you may know, I actively dislike one-button dopamine frame setups. It's also the same reason why I don't have a finished Korra build on my channel. On the other hand, I have had many, many people ask me for a Baruch build over time, and with the most recent update, I feel it's finally time for me to tackle this question. We have two different Baruchs to show you today that hopefully can suit whatever playstyle you want. This is Baruch, but even more damage. Let's knock the first interaction out of the way. Condition Overload is a staple melee mod, however, on Baruch's Desert Storm, it does not affect the wave, only direct hits. Realistically, the vast majority of your DPS on Baruch will come from your waves, and not your fists. This means your base damage is essentially capped, with no scaling potential. This isn't really a problem because Baruch's raw damage is just insane, however, this also means base damage is his most lacking stat if you wanted to push Desert Wind further. Enter New War and the Nera mods. These currently affect all melee damage, not just slam damage, and they also use Warframe mod slots instead of weapon slots, so slotting these on Baruch can massively improve Desert Wind's damage. Warframe mod slots are generally worth less firepower than weapon mod slots, so being able to get base damage from Warframe mods is extremely good. While most Baruch builds no longer use a stat stick melee because of the gladiator set bug, one of our two loadouts will today, and whip melees can equip the third Nira mod, Nira's Contempt, which grants us a total of 300% free base damage on Desert Wind. Yes, I have tested and it does work. Seeing as how Baruch normally wants to stack attack speed arcanes and condition overload doesn't work on the waves, you usually only have prime pressure point or sacrificial steel as your source of base damage. Therefore, this 300% base damage from the Nero set is a massive DPS increase. It's the equivalent of having melee weapon arcanes like guns currently do. The only other thing to discuss today is the Gladiator set bug on Desert Wind. You can stat stick Gladiator mods on a melee build to build up combo before going into Desert Wind. Desert Wind is generally hard to build combo with because it's so strong the waves kill everything, and you only build combo in direct hits with your fists. Therefore, in theory, using a stat stick melee would be a good idea. However, Exalted Melees now use their own combo counter for Gladiator stacks once they build combo multipliers. This means as soon as your combo bar runs out or you heavy attack, it will wipe the 11x Gladiator stat from your stat stick melee. There's more to this bug that is really annoying and complicated, but essentially this bug makes it annoying to use a gladiator stat stick for desert wind to build up combo ever since update 29.5 because at any point you can completely reset your gladiator stacks with Desert Wind. Normally enemies die at a distance, but Baruch requires a high enemy spawn density to sustain Desert Wind indefinitely and thus means he performs best on Steel Pass Survival, which is where everyone uses him. Unfortunately, higher enemy spawns means in narrower tiles and hallways enemies can get too close to you, and thus within direct range of your actual fists. Voila, you accidentally build combo and your red crits no longer exist. To get around this, these days people typically run grouping helmets and try to build combo in Desert Wind directly. On the other hand, losing combo in Desert Wind is absolutely detrimental if you go this route. For example, if it resets and you aren't on Nerimon, which you should be. Or worse, you get pulled out of Desert Wind due to a nullifier or falling off the map. But there is a way around this. Enter Melee Guidance. So, if you look at my Desert Wind, it has negative 1 second combo duration. You won't see this in your orbiter because auras are not active there, but they are active in relays and the simulacrum. Melee Guidance is a mod that reduces your combo duration and increases your allies. A negative or zero combo duration Baruch cannot build combo on Desert Wind at all. In fact, the combo meter is completely absent. This means you will never bug out your gladiator stacks and replace the stat stick gladiator stacks with desert wind stacks. Therefore, you can now use a stat stick to build combo in Baruch again. The cost? Your aura slot. But that's not absolutely horrible, so let's take a closer look at his build. This Baruch is a slight spin on more commonly seen builds. I didn't completely tank duration this time, because the only real purpose of tanking duration is to spam your 2 to erode his restraint meter quickly. 
Realistically, the only reliable use of Baruch is in Endurance Survival, and there really isn't a need to bottom out his Restraint ASAP. You can cast your 4 even when it's partially eroded only. Decently negative duration like this is still good enough. With the enemy spawn density, you can cast your 2 on, say, 2 groups of enemies and then go into your 4. At that point, you can easily move between enemy groups and cast your 2 while killing them, as if the enemies are dead, spamming your 2 is kinda pointless. So long as you keep killing, the benefits of 13% duration lull are basically irrelevant. But why go negative duration then? Because you can still have functional duration synergies at 55% duration and fleeting expertise helps a lot with cast costs. Desolate Hands doesn't care about duration, and we have a choice of different helmets with 55% duration. In this particular build, I've chosen Pillage for shield gating because we can't run Brief Respite. Pairing this with a Rolling Guard, it's more than enough to survive. 55% duration also means Pillage will expand for 1.1 seconds on cast, which is equivalent to 22 meters. We have neutral range on this Baruch, so Pillage starts at 8 meters radius, meaning the final reach is 30 meters radius. The short duration means you don't need to manually cancel it. This is a pretty solid area to cover and will consistently regenerate shields for you. Alternatively, you can run Silence because it has a base duration of 30 seconds, so even at 55 duration it will still last 16.5 seconds. It is a bit spammy, but will be very effective in CCing all enemies, including preventing Acolytes from casting abilities, such as Violence's own version of Silence. You will also get stealth multipliers if you hit enemies during the 2 second stun animation. Just keep in mind, if you use Silence, you will want to bring a Sandstick Pistol with two Augur mods on it since you won't have Pillage or Brief Respite for Shield Gating. Your 3 is just there for slight Restraint Erosion and that 90% damage reduction. I don't think I need to explain more about it because most of its interactions are irrelevant for standard play. It helps your teammates, and range affects the Seek Radius of Daggers, etc. But if you're in your 4, everything dies, so you won't notice any of its effects besides the damage reduction. Reactive Storm is a mandatory augment because it changes your 4's damage typing to whatever the enemy is weak against, after a moment of hitting them. It also gives a ton of status chance that scales with strength. You reach 100% status at 227 strength, and we are well above that. Obviously, we want to build strength to bump up Desert Wind's damage, so Umbral Intensify and Blind Rage. Blind Rage is the reason we slotted Fleeting Expertise as well, because the cast cost of its 2 and 3 can get pretty expensive otherwise. Equilibrium is the flex slot, so you can put whatever else you want here, but it will synergize with a Panzer for constant health orb drops from Viral Quills granting you pet assists on literally everything. The synth mods will let you spawn tons of health orbs and pick them up even when full HP, and as a stopgap, we even have Arcane Energize. I am confident this is enough energy and no single cast of his abilities is too expensive, so I didn't slot Prime to flow. Arcane Strike because attack speed on Baruch is everything, like I said. Nier's Hatred is intentionally ranked 5 because I actually wanted some duration on this build. If you want to run a 13, well, 15% duration build, which I personally do not recommend, you would run a rank 0 Nier's Hatred instead and Transient Fortitude instead of Umbral Intensify. Nier's Anguish main mod effects are near useless on this build and we really only have it for the set bonus. And of course, Prime Sure Footed because getting knocked sucks. Otherwise, replace it for Handspring if you don't have it. This first build I'm showing you is a negative combo duration build, so whatever guns you bring, make sure of this. Bring a rifle so you can slot Amalgam Serration for extra sprint speed. You won't be shooting this gun much, so you might as well make it a useful stat stick. The weapon arcane should be Merciless, or Deadhead if you want. Merciless is probably more useful if you're bringing something that you may want to shoot and needs the reload. But basically, we do not want combo duration, so absolutely do not bring primary dexterity. The same holds true for the pistol, however we now have the option to bring a viral primer if you want. I would go the AoE route with Epitaph because the range on your Desert Wind waves is absolutely ridiculous, so something like Nucor is kinda wasted. This is a pure Viral Epitaph Primer build with multi-shot fire rate and bonus status. Once again, don't slot Dexterity Arcanes. Deadhead and Merciless really have no difference because Epitaph doesn't need to reload. For our stat stick melee today, I've chosen the Vertilac just because. It's an actually functional whip and pretty cool with a nasty gimmick. However, you won't see that today since it isn't built for that. If you want to see what type of mayhem the Vertilac can unleash, Click the link at the top right. It's an absolute beast of a melee and the best one of the Archon melees from the new war. It even competes with top tier melees, only being under Glaive Prime. Now why a whip? 
because of Nero's Contempt, the third mod in the set bonus. This can only be equipped on whips, so that's what we're doing today. It's also very easy to build combo on whips, so it works in our favor. We wanted to build for as much combo as possible, but you'll notice I slotted True Punishment here. This is just to build combo easier, but if you really care about the 2.5 seconds, because it only removes 2.5 seconds, you can take it off. There are no other combo duration mods left, so I just wanted some quality of life to build combo even faster. Blood Rush doesn't work on Desert Wind, so we stacked three Gladiator mods on Vertilac for the set bonus. Literally, the only purpose of Vertilac here is to spin around and build a 220 combo with as high combo duration as we can fit. This should go without saying, but you should always pick Neuromon on Baruch for Power Spike instead of Zenerik, unless you have a Death Wish. While you can take Zenerik to spam heavies more easily and reset combo duration to full if it is about to expire, Baruch doesn't really have any energy problems and his native build already favors actually building. For 90% heavy efficiency of the weapon itself, you'll see later if you need it. Power Spike makes all melee combo counters only decay by 5 at a time, meaning you no longer have to worry about losing all combo if enemies aren't around. The Desert Wind build? This is a light attack spam build. We really want attack speed, so we slotted Berserker Fury as well as Quickening. Kills are a joke, so we didn't offer Primed Fury. Combined with Arcane Strike, this makes it feel much smoother. Only the impact component of Desert Wind adapts to enemy health and armor, but it takes a moment to do so, so we still build for Corrosive to deal with armor targets if it doesn't require multiple hits to kill. Also, Corrosive gets to use the only primed elemental mod for melee. Obvious organ shatter to seal crits, just keep in mind Blood Rush and Weeping can't be slotted on Desert Wind, but isn't necessary either. Primed a smite for extra faction damage. It's only 55% bonus because we don't do dots on Baruch. So if you don't want to slot this, Gladiator Might is fully viable and a only slightly worse option. Now comes the interesting part. Sacrificial Steel is obvious since we can't slot Blood Rush. But do you slot Sacrificial Pressure or Prime Pressure Point? If you go double sacrificials, it will obviously require one Umbral Forma to fit like this. However, if you take Prime Pressure Point, you can use an Ordinary Forma instead in this slot. But there is something else to consider. Double Sacrificial puts you at 187.5% crit chance. This lets you hit purely red crits, or above 300% crit, so long as you have 8 Gladiator stacks or higher. This is 9x combo, or say, more than 155 combo when it's decaying from Neramon. With Nermon, it takes 5 minutes and 18 seconds for Vertilac to drop down to 155 combo, and you will start seeing oranges instead of red. This means every 5 minutes, you need to exit Desert Wind and spin a few times with Vertilac to build it back up to 220, and then going back into Desert Wind. Just remember, you don't actually need to and can't even build combo on Desert Wind. So exiting and re-entering it on this build is fine. But what happens if you use Primed Pressure Point? You only have 160% critical chance. This means you will need 10 Gladiator stacks or higher to hit only red crits if you do this. This is 11x combo or more than 195 combo. It takes 2 minutes and 2 seconds for Vertilac to drop down to 195 combo on Neramon. Then you might start seeing oranges and this means you'll need to exit Desert Wind every 2 minutes to slide a few times before you go back into Desert Wind if you only want to see reds. It's up to you on which one you want. Personally, I don't really care for reds, so if I did this again, I would use Prime Pressure Point as I rarely have Umbral Forma spare, since I also don't even farm for it. The reason why I have an Umbral Forma here is because I actually had a Baruch Desert Wind Eidolon build, and these sacrificial sets do count as Banes against them. Yes, a Desert Wind Eidolon build. If you want even more damage, you could go for Condition Overload instead, but that would only work on direct hits and I wouldn't recommend it. Though in theory, because I haven't tested in a level cap, maybe this would actually make it viable there. Who knows? But just as a warning, this melee guidance method only fixes the gladiator bug for light attacks by removing building combo. You will still internally reset combo on heavy attacks and that will screw up your gladiator stacks you build up on Vertilac again. So do not heavy attack on this setup. Anyways, the build works as advertised. You go into a mission, erode some restraint, and slide around on Vertilac to hit 220 combo. Then you just go into your 4 and do whatever you want for either 2 or 5 minutes. 
cast your two on new enemy groups to eventually bottom out your restraint. Use whatever helmet you subsumed on, whether pillage or silence. Maybe spam your AoE viral epitaph if you want those viral stacks. Simple to use and massive damage because of the nearest set, giving 300% more base damage. Like I said, don't ever use heavy attacks on this build because it will bring the gladiator stack bug back. Now let's look at the other Baruch build. This one is a little bit more contemporary like the ones you've seen. Now you know what's funny? This second build is identical to your first, however it uses Brief Respite. This is a max DPS Giga Chad build. The helmet is Eclipse on your one. But if it is a darker tile, you can use Roar also. Neither skill lasts very long and Roar can be very expensive to cast. Alternatively, you can just run Streamline instead of Fleeting Expertise if you want more existent duration, but that's up to you. The rest of the build is the exact same, with identical strength and range benchmarks and the reactive storm augment for adaptive damage. We even still have equilibrium and energize to deal with the energy economy, especially if you've replaced fleeting expertise, without having to resort to prime to flow. What's important is this time, this is while you will still bring a stat stick melee, you will not be building combo on it due to the gladiator bug, as we will have positive combo duration on Desert Wind. This is a more conventional Desert Wind setup that builds combo on the fist themselves because it's meant for maximum DPS potential as well. Make sure your primary weapon has Amalgam Serration for bonus sprint speed and primary dexterity for combo duration since we will be building combo as an option to use heavy attacks on Desert Wind. The Epitaph build again can be whatever you want with preference to Viral because you can't make effective use of Condition Overload. Make sure the Weapon Arcane this time is secondary dexterity also. So if you look at Desert Wind now, it has a 20 second combo duration, which is a lot more normal. This build allows you to use both light and heavy attacks as needed. Shocking Touch has been dropped for Focus Energy, and Quickening has been dropped for Reflex Coil. Therefore, we now have Naramon for Power Spike to minimize combo decay while also attaining 90% heavy efficiency. If you get the chance to, heavy attacking an Acolyte with a Leg Stomp on this setup with Eclipse will absolutely one-shot it and then some extra. You still have double sources of attack speed from Berserker Fury and Arcane Strike on the frame, remember. So this build I would recommend running Double Sacrificial if you care about red crits because it is much harder to build combo on Desert Wind than Vertilac and this will let you see red crits consistently even sooner for a very small damage loss, especially once nearest 300% base damage comes into play. Rest of the build is stock, Organ Shatter for crit damage, and getting use out of the Primed Elemental. Prime Smite for more raw damage, which again, you can drop for Gladiator Might if you don't want to use it since this isn't a Daunt build, so the Prime Smite only gives 55% final bonus instead of 140%. It is still noticeably stronger than Gladiator Might though. And there you go, a more contemporary second Baruch build setup for those that like to use the heavy attack and just want to see biggest damage numbers possible. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering all the new war stuff. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching and see you all next time.